Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me here today with Robert. Hey everybody, I'm Robert. Welcome back to Florida. We are, of course, here in the US with some big, big, big news to discuss. The SSC Tuatara has now set a confirmed top speed world record for a production car with the two-way average speed at 282.9 miles an hour. And today we can take you behind the scenes with Robert, who was there at the runway in person to see what was happening during the event. But we'll go back to the beginning of the discussion as well with the claimed video at 331 miles per hour through to what we now know is confirmed as the fastest car in the world. Firstly, a huge congratulations to Jared Shelby and all of the team at SSC on this fantastic achievement. I know for those involved who have persevered through, this means an awful lot to have achieved a world record, and I'm very jealous that Robert was there to witness it in person. Despite being out in Florida myself, unfortunately, as a non-US citizen, in order to gain access to the US military base requires time to run background checks to get clearance, and with Christmas and New Year, there just wasn't quite enough time in order for me to go but in a moment we will jump behind the scenes with Robert for a vlog of the day itself to see everything as it took place. Before we do that though, I want to rewind back to where this discussion began with the video published back in October 2020, a couple of months ago, that showed the claimed record run on the Top Gear channel with the SSC Tuatara going 331 miles per hour. That was the speed in one direction, 301 miles per hour back in the other direction for an average of 316 miles per hour, a figure that is truly breathtaking. For myself, like Robert, like Misha, it was a case of congratulations to SSC SSC on this achievement. Absolutely incredible to go 38 miles an hour faster, a massive step up on the previous record holder, the Koenigsegg Agera RS that had been done on the same stretch of road in Nevada two years or so before. Now about a week later, when I was out with Robert and Misha at the Nürburgring, intending to shoot what would have been my 100th lap of the Nürburgring itself, unfortunately the weather was so horrendous that the track was closed and I intended to shoot a video instead talking about this success the week before and what had been done with the Tuatara out in Nevada. When we started though to talk more about it, to look into the details and read more, read more comments as well, we started to pick up on some questions to understand whether this was exactly what we were being told it was. Things, for example, like the rate of acceleration of the car towards the top end, like the possibility for the tires to go quite that fast, the comparatives with the Koenigsegg run using fixed median points on the road and the simple calculations of distance equals speed times time about whether it was really going this quick as we're being told it was. There were a few other things as well, the gearbox in the car, the helicopter flying by, the length of the lines on the road, and I think this is where we started to ask questions about it, and maybe I should pass over to Robert. Yeah, so at this point we start asking questions and we're wondering what is going on here? And we take these comments, as Tim mentioned a moment ago, and we start seeing all of this stuff coming together, and all of a sudden we have a weight on our shoulders, and, and we see this and we say, what do we do with this information? We, we then had to lay out and, and this, mind you, up until five in the morning some nights, staying up until five and then back at it at eight the next morning, we have to start putting a list together. What are the pros of bringing this out? What are the cons of letting it go? What are our goals bringing it out? And what do we let go of by letting it go? And we came to the simple conclusion that we have a couple of goals. We want journalistic integrity that needs to be upheld, not just sharing a story because it's fun, it's neat, it's <laughs> gonna get us clicks. And secondly, we want transparency. And those were really two of our big goals out of this was, was some integrity and transparency, not just from the journalism side, but also from these manufacturers. A hundred percent. And I think we had questions as well about the, the non or lack of clarity over the data. Absolutely. Uh, around so many different things and the transparency topic as you talk, which is why the, I suppose, story has developed. SSC went back at it. Jared announced they would go and do another couple of runs. You've been out as well. Yep, I've, I've been out four, for four days of running with them now. Multiple and testing days. Yeah, it's, been, it's actually been a fantastic event. And I can say that the transparency would be one goal that we have certainly met in this regard. Which I think brings us now to going to the day of the record with Robert to see it as it took place. Welcome to the Kennedy Space Center SLF. 2.3 miles down that runway is the SSC Tuatara 
getting ready to make what they hope is an ultimate speed run, an ultimate test of what this car can do on this runway. You can see here the car is down this way. It's going to be running 2.3 miles to this set of flags here with one more mile of runoff. For this run, I've positioned myself at the timing station where if he stays in it the entire way, he will hit a top speed here. The situation is that if he hits anything with a three before it, before this timing station, he's going to let off and we're gonna rely on the GPS data to tell us how far or how fast the car went. In the background, you can actually hear the cannons and these cannons are set because over the course of a three plus mile runway, you have birds, you have wildlife that could come out on the runway. And the idea is that this will spook them off and actually clear the path for the car so that we eliminate one more concern in what has proven to be a situation that is full of little issues and, and weather and car trouble and things like that. So the last thing that they need is wildlife problems. So I can see right now the reflection of the car coming down. It is underway. You can already hear the car traveling this direction. All right, fast forward down to the other end of the track, and I have Jim from Race Logic here today. Hello. So Jim is responsible, basically, for validating this uh, on behalf of Race Logic. Right, top speed is the main thing, but all the time, distance, position, all that kind of stuff, just to avoid any questions right. like there were from last time. So, tell me one thing: How is GPS signal picked up? How does it work? So we're receiving signals from the satellites and like a radar gun, you have one single point and you read how fast the vehicle is moving forward towards you or away from you. With GPS, we're doing that, but times 15 satellites in the sky. So, so it's got a real good fix on the position it's going, uh, the position, the direction it's going, and of course the speed. So basically the satellite sends a ping down to the car. All the satellites are just always broadcasting. Yep. And so this is, this the antenna in their very sophisticated GPS receivers are receiving that data and they can tell how quickly we're moving towards some satellites, away from other ones. Right. And really get so it's all pick. time based, how long it takes to move away. And it gets so complex that you've got all these fingers coming down. One, the, the way they all correlate together determines height, elevation, distance, speed, everything. Right, right. Okay. So it's all that's all calculated in the actual GPS receiver. So when you have when you have 15 plus satellites, you couldn't even alter the data because it would throw off the data from the other satellite. Right. Okay. And they got a cable coming out of it still. They're gonna they're gonna get that cable. That is the <laughs> that is the warmer for the oil system. Oh, yeah. Well. Yeah. Let's see. So okay. Well, we'll talk a little bit more yeah, later. We gotta, we gotta run. We're getting ready to run. We're heading to mid track with Jason. All right, here we are again, this time on the northwest side of the, of the runway, essentially 2.3 miles down from where we just spoke with Jim. You hear the bird cannons going off in the background. You see the, the, the timing booth uh, office, if you would call it that, as well as Jason, the designer of the car. He's standing back here as well. He wants to see the car and hear the car as it goes by. One thing that I will say is quite impressive actually about this car is that when it's underway, it's, it is relatively quiet. You can tell that it's not producing a ton of drag Keep in mind that this right here, if it's a fast run, will be the first run that is at speed. The car has not yet gone over what we would consider to be the current world record. So we're obviously looking for a big number going this way with a tailwind. I can hear the very faint sound of what should be a car coming this way. Here it is. Seven eight point two two four, and again, he could have let off before the trap. Let's get down to the other end of the track. We'll check the V box data. We'll talk about what might have happened. Was it pulling timing? Was it doing anything at all? Or did everything run perfectly? Let's see what it hit top speed. I saw 278 already. 279. What was your top that you got on there? 279 was your big number. Yeah, 279.7 is the final. 279.7, yeah, let me see if I can get that. I can't get that. Oh, about one, not, not quite an hour, just under an hour has passed. 
We have about seven minutes. They have about seven minutes to get the car from this position here, roll down the return road because they're actually using this small return road or the small runoff road in order to get speed so that they can have enough, uh, basically enough road to set a record or to get to top speed. In the last run, we just watched some video footage and the car is still gaining speed even at 280 miles an hour. So they're just out of space. You'll recall that I, I made a video uh, about the, the first rerun or the second attempt that the car made. And I said that I believe that the car might get in the 280s, but we're gonna be at a point where we're running out of track and that really is what we're seeing now. Here's the car coming down. You've got the SSC team pushing, pulling things away. Bird cannons firing off about six minutes before the car needs to be ready to rock. And you can see here what the driver's dealing with on this little return road. This is what he's gonna shoot down and hopefully pass this point, this transition as fast as he possibly can. Probably 60, 70 miles an hour is what he's going to need uh, to hit that transition. And that 60 miles an hour might gain him 10, 15 on the top end just by having a little bit of space. We'll see what happens. The next thing we're going to see is the car shooting out of here and launching up again the direction from our first run today where the car went in the uh, low 260s. All right, so here we are running from one end of the runway down to the, to the other end, uh, the same way the car just ran. And basically what we're gonna do now is go down, get the V-Box data and see how fast that run was. Unfortunately, I couldn't hear the radio uh, jump off and, and give the report of the, the time that, or the speed that the car went through the traps in. So we will see uh, what it is. I'm very eager to hear. So we saw a lot of hugs and high fives on this side. So we're gonna come in right now and see what it did. Uh, we'll pull up the V-Box data as well as look at the display. The car, has, uh, the car has officially set a record. I'm waiting on official numbers back from uh, Race Logic from V-Box. So as you can see, the guys are, are relatively excited. They're happy with the result, obviously. It's been a tremendous couple of weeks here, uh, really even since October of testing the car and putting the package back together and, and, and really finding each weakness of the car. And I can say that after seeing the runs uh, of 285, I'm sorry, 286.1 going this direction and then 279.7 going back the other direction, after seeing this and watching the data and looking over the logs and how the car was actually accelerating, the car will go much quicker. How much quicker? Again, I don't want to speculate. In my last video, I spoke about uh, that I expected to see something in the 280s, and that's definitely what we saw here. But I think in the mid 290s now that the car's starting to build up power and getting more reliable, I guess you could say. And, and, and uh, today it, it made pass after pass at these high, high speeds. The motor was running very strong. Um, I believe that we would see on this runway probably in the 290s, 295, 300 could be, could be a possibility. Um, if you watch the video and you see how the car was still accelerating at the top end before he lifted, you'll see that there was still a lot more in it. It was actually building at a very solid rate. So big speeds uh, are possible. I don't know when they're gonna run again, if they're going to run again, but I suspect that it might be nice to keep a little bit in the bag and, and uh, maybe answer if another company comes out and beats their record. If you've ever been on my channel, you now know why I just sit in front of a car and speak. But nonetheless, I really hope you guys enjoyed my attempt at vlogging. Well, I certainly appreciated it, being able to see exactly what happened on the day. But let's confirm then the results from the 17th of January 2021. A new two-way average world record top speed for a production car. It was done at Space Florida's landing launch facility with Johnny Bohm approving grounds. The car was driven by the owner, Larry Kaplan, with a northbound speed of 279.7 miles per hour. And just under an hour later, the southbound speed of 286.1 miles per hour for a two-way average, a record of 282.9 miles per hour, five miles an hour faster than the previous record. And to be honest, probably not the fastest it could even go. No, without a doubt. Uh, you can see in the video that the car is still massively accelerating. 
uh, you can basically count it as boost by gear. In seventh gear, that thing got full boost and it took off. It's incredible to watch, absolutely incredible to and watch. The driver got out and said, give me that in fifth and sixth. <laughs> <laughs> so who knows what will happen next, as you said in, in your vlog. But I think this is, this is a, a big step. It was the right thing to do to go back out there to, to show, to take the correct data devices. It might not be 316 miles per hour, but what's been done is transparent, which was you know, the ultimate goal. We, we laid out two objectives. We wanted tra really transparency and, and journalistic integrity, right? And these were two of our big goals from it. And we have a manufacturer that gave us full transparency. I can't tell you what I saw, what I was involved in. My hands had grease on them. I, you know, I was in the middle of everything. I've got pictures from every tire after every run. and. I was in the data logs, everything. It was 100% an open book to me. I was listening to conversations of people whispering. I know everything that happened. I probably know more about the car or as much about the car as some of the guys there, you know? It was really, they really opened the book. And I think that sets a standard, hopefully, for other manufacturers going forward with their tests. Well, we certainly know how important it is for the industry in general, because a top speed record right. sells cars. Yes. It's a very competitive market with Bugatti running the Chiron Supersport 300 plus. They did the One Direction run to 304.77 miles per hour. But the new generation of contenders as well, the Koenigsegg Jesko Absolute, the Hennessy Venom F5. And I think another thing is there are realistic targets. There are yeah. verified targets. They, they know and have the evidence and will hopefully replicate that when they do attempt themselves because the data is confirmed. You know, race logic were there, you were there with, with the guys, the V-Box data devices in the cars to ensure that what we see now is a correct, legitimate world record. Absolutely, and I think that the, there's multiple aspects to it. We can now verify it. We know that we know what happened. We have the GPS data. We've got the, uh, I've got the GPS data, the V-Box data showing where the car was, the G-forces it was pulling at every single point. And that's one huge step forward for us. That's one huge step forward to be able to verify that. And another thing that I think has really come positive out of this is we've been able to see the SSC team really work through this. It wasn't just in one day. It wasn't in one cinematic exercise. <laughs> it was done over a course of hard work, bl literally blood, sweat, and tears going into this. And I think that's a story that I appreciate more, especially in the times that we're in now. Mm -hmm. I appreciate a story where a company had to work. The, the, they're the little guy, right? And yep. they had to work to struggle to get this goal and I like that a heck of a lot more than bam, we went 331 and we just blew everybody away. I think it makes for a much better story long term. Definitely, and they did it. A huge congratulations to everybody in the team. It's a new world record. I think it's what we hoped for from the very beginning. We never said that the car couldn't do it. We just said that this didn't show it. Didn't depict it, yeah. This, this didn't show what we were being told that showed. So, I mean, from my side, again, a massive congratulations. I think that's... Likewise from my side, I, I can only congratulate the team. I saw a lot of teamwork come together, a lot of unity, and good results come from such cooperation. So way to go team. I look forward to seeing something with a three uh, on it. <laughs> a three average is gonna be tough, but hey, we'll see what happens, right? Could you imagine? For now, I would just love to see the car before too long, hopefully get an opportunity <laughs> to share with you guys a little bit more about the SSC to Atara. For now though, again, a big congratulations. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for watching. Thank you to Robert as well for filming during the day itself. That is all though. I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.